I'm quite surprised to see anyone here has been, as my talk said, TBC quite a while, um, up until Monday, in fact, and I'm going to blame four letters for that, GDPR. Um, <laughs> I hope none of you have been through the hell I have. Um, but obviously, my title is actually How Does a Brand, How Does a 100 Year Old Brand Embrace Digital? Um, so I joined Betty's a year ago, just over a year ago, um, and in an entirely new role for the business. So I um, came in as head of digital. Uh, and my first task has been get this site on, uh, the, get our M1 site onto our M2 site. And um, in a business that has a long heritage and um, lots, of, lots of different ways of working that have built up over that time, um, my, my first task has been quite a challenging one. So I kind of am going to talk through what I've been doing in the past year, basically. Um, so first of all, can I have a show of hands for anyone that has actually heard of Betty's before today? Amazing, I didn't know what I was going to do with no one put up their hands. <laughs> so, um, can I ask which of you has actually been to one of these places? Amazing, great. Um, so then, of you who put up your hands, how would you describe Betty? So, any kind of words or sentence that you would think of um, to reflect the experience that you had in Betty's? Ah, amazing. Anything else? Traditional. Oh, traditional, yeah, we get lots of that. So that's exactly the question that we asked our customers in 2016, and this is what they came back with. Um, so lots of product recall. So we had um, people saying fat rascals, uh, fond and fancies, which is great because it's exactly what we do. Um, but then lots of queue. So if anyone of the people that have been there, you probably had to stand in the queue for a little while. Um, tea, so people queuing for tea, it doesn't get much more British than that. Um, and, and then they were also really focusing on welcoming and old-fashioned, which actually is actually using the positive connotation of their teas. Um, and a golden age and welcoming. So they're all really words that describe the, the tea rooms and the branch experience. And as the new head of digital, I kind of looked at this and thought, this is incredible, but actually, what does that mean for our online customers? Um, so I kind of looked at it as a whole and then tried to pull out some real themes within this. So the first theme was the product. So customers really trust our product. They really see the quality in it. It's all baked um, fresh in our craft bakery in Harrogate and then distributed to our six branches. Um, and, and customers recognize that, and that's a particular reason that they come to us. And secondly, the service. So um, we're really proud of the kind of Yorkshire warmth you get when you come into a Betty's. It's, um, it's, a real, it's as iconic as the structure that it sits within. Um, and then lastly is that structure, so the setting. So um, this is the reason why they're coming for their morning coffee in a Betty's instead of going for a morning coffee in a Starbucks because they know that they've got the quality of the fresh product that's made in Yorkshire, that they're getting a smile with their um, scone and they're uh, sitting at a beautiful table in really luxurious surroundings. Um, so this is what we refer to as the holy trinity of Betty's. And I kind of looked at this again and thought, how do I take all of this and put it on, into an online setting? Um, but one thing I really wanted to get clear on firsthand was of our tea room customers, how many of them are actually going online? Because online grew about as, a, um, as an extension to our tea room. So it came, um, or it kind of grew organically. And we thought, let's we make a cake here, it's sold in our branch, let's put it online and see if it sells. Um, so actually 76% of people have, who shop online with us have been into a Betty's before, which is great. People know about us. But this question was really worded in a way that if I, as a three-year-old girl, went in uh, with my grandma 30 years ago, then uh, that's not going to be true of a current Betty's. And, and so we kind of needed to get a little bit deeper into that question. So we asked then, how many of you actually been in the last year? So 33% of people who shop online with Betty's have been in the last year to a tea room, which again is great. A third of our customers are multi-channel. They're going into a tea room and then they're going and purchasing online. 
So for those 33%, all of those values really stay true, but there are 67% of people who have never been in a Betty's. They don't know a brand apart from this online experience that they're receiving. Um, and so then I looked at, for all those people, what's, what's right for that part of people, but um, also right for the, the new 67%, so for the branch customers and for the newly acquired customers. So I drilled in a little bit deeper into our um, online orders and found that 77% uh, of them buy as a gift. And this was also something that our branch customers were telling us. They were saying, um, yeah, I, I come into your tea room and uh, when it's my friend's birthday, I know that I can get a really good cake from Betty's and I can have it sent to my friend. Um, and so that was really true. We're also a very seasonally driven business. So 67% of our business is done at Easter and Christmas. So when we're looking at product, instead of saying, we're gonna take that cake and we're gonna just put it online, instead we're gonna turn it into a really giftable experience. And so that's why we've embraced hampers massively. So hampers for us at Christmas um, do 53% of our business. Um, so gifting is really the key message for us in terms of, um, in terms of our, our product proposition. So then the second point in that triangle is service. So how do we deliver the amazing service that our customers receive from our waitresses on our website? So the first point is warm, that warm Yorkshire welcome. So we looked at how we bring that through in our tone of voice, how our customer services talk, how we ensure that the service that they're receiving in our branches is exactly the same as the messaging and the kind of level of expectation that we're delivering against online. Similarly, our operations, um, so our dispatch, and this video shows exactly how we pack everything, the care that we take, um, and then moving on to our couriers, how we can ensure that at the part of our journey that's entirely out of our hands with our third party, how can we make sure we're choosing the right couriers for us? So an example on, uh, with our international orders, um, we found that a massive proportion of them weren't, weren't able to be tracked, they weren't getting to our customers, and so we moved to an, an improved courier, an improved service, and now we've actually unlocked the opportunity to um, order our really fresh items, so people who have been to Betty's might have had a fat rascal, so you can order a fat rascal on a Monday, um, sorry, we can bake a fat rascal on a Monday, you can order it on a Tuesday, it'll be with you on a Wednesday in America, so suddenly this fresh business is delivered worldwide. Uh, we also have a, um, a kind of logic behind our system zone, behind our online business. So uh, if you come into the branch, everything is entirely fresh because typically it will have either been baked the day before or that morning. Um, with online, it takes some time to get there. So we have um, a, a piece of a bespoke logic that sits behind our Magento uh, platform called what we refer to as available to promise. And that logic works out where you are in the world um, what product you're ordering, um, by which delivery mode, how quickly is it gonna get there, and then we can ensure that when it arrives with you, it's as perfectly fresh as we would expect it to be had you picked up in the branch. And then, lastly, we looked at setting. So, the setting um, is an interesting one. I used to work for um, a large uh, luxury, I'm thinking about how to describe it without saying the name, um, London department store, um, who had a very similar thinking to Betty's does. So they believed that when you arrived on the website, you should um, have a video played that is literally some doors opening and you walking through and into the store. But I don't know about any of you, but I would not convert on a site like that, that stuck a big video in front of my face as soon as I got on it. I'm just trying to find out when you're opening, I'm just trying to book a, book a table, I'm just trying to order some product. Um, and this thinking is, has been present in quite a few of the brands I've worked at that are all very much heritage brands. Um, and so this literal interpretation of your bricks and mortar into, into an online business um, has been a bit of a challenge. So this is what the website looks like today. Um, the colors and the um, imagery really doesn't match the kind of things that we show about our branches. So our branches are all um, gold, white, and black. It's all very much about the product. So when you walk into a Betty's, obviously you can smell the breads, you can see all the colorful macaroons, you can sit down, you can taste product. 
on the website, you can't do any of that. And, um, so how do we allow you to taste with your eyes? Uh, so the website, this is a sneak preview, this is gonna launch next year. Um, so the website for next year, the imagery isn't quite there yet, but we're looking at doing a whole photo shoot around really delving into seeing that moist fruit cake and how those biscuits crumble, because actually those are the things that mean that you can really taste it. Um, and the themes and the kind of colors and the tone of voice will all be really similar to your experience in the branch. So 100 years ago, this guy who's called Frederick Belmont uh, moved from Switzerland to uh, Yorkshire and opened his very first Betty's cafe. Um, and although it was, the year was 1919, he was very um, entrepreneurial for his time. So three years after start opening his first Betty's cafe, he put this ad out in the local paper, which advertised, um, I don't know if you can read it, post orders receive prompt attention, so you can order your Betty's cake from the cafe and we'll post it out to you. So our business started in 1922 with a really entrepreneurial mindset. Um, and yet we've kind of evolved into this um, business with legacy and I know our systems are heavy and bespoke. Um, and so how do we kind of, not only with the website, bring that entrepreneurial spirit, but also look wider. That's exactly what Frederick was doing um, 100 years ago. So how do we bring digital to a brand that has been loved for 100 years? But similarly, how do we bring 100 years to a digital brand? So these are the kind of things that we're thinking of all the time and the things that we're moving forward with in our plans. So bringing digital to a brand loved for 100 years are things that um, our customers of a certain age, they, um, the idea of being asked for an email address to get their receipt would terrify them and they wouldn't know why we're doing it. Um, so actually we need to do the right things in the right way. Um, and having, a, our, our, our retail stores are, very, are, are quite compact. There's only limited shelving space, but actually allowing them through a guided process to say, um, your hampers that you would normally buy online, we can help you with that here because you're here today, so let's, let me take you through that and get that ordered for you. Similarly, multi-channel loyalty program, it's not something we've got yet at Betty's, and, um, and that's something we're really working towards. Click and collect, 33% of our online, visit, online customers can get into the branch, so why not make that easier for them? Um, and same day delivery within Yorkshire, so our, our Betty's vans deliver to Yorkshire from our bakery every morning. They go out to our six branches, but then they just sit in the forecourt. So that's something I'm exploring as well, of how can I utilize that service and get it within a certain radius. And then thinking about how we bring 100 years onto, onto the website. So next year is our 100 year anniversary. I'm slightly doing this year ahead. It's only 99, but I rounded it up. Um, so the memory hub. So this is a really lovely idea for um, for how we're going to celebrate our centenary year. When you talk to somebody about their time at Betty's, it will often be around an occasion or they will have visited and, um, and it will have been a, a really special moment for them and they'll be able to recall that occasion in, with real emotion um, and uh, lots of people will have photographs of their time there as well and so the Memory Hub is really going to be a place for them to um, share that and for us to... Um, welcome that kind of emotion. Uh, subscription models, so again, thinking with that entrepreneurial spirit, spirit how can we take these products um, and still make them giftable to, make, to continue that uh, messaging? Um, personalized cakes, so we, we do do some small area of personalization, but like every brand, we're looking at how we can make it more personal to the customer. Um, and letterbox friendly ranges as well, so uh, we, we currently, everything goes out in a rather large box. Uh, the majority of our services also have to be signed for because they're fresh items. So how can we make sure that they can go straight through their letterbox? So then thinking about the last 100 years, but then reflecting on the next 100 years, um, digital really plays a part in that continual nature. I think that with retail, with so many other restaurants and retailers struggling, as we are in, in terms of our tea rooms. Um, it's, it, it's a hard time, but actually our digital growth is amazing. <laughs> Not thanks to me, but... Um, and so 
how do we ensure that there is a cyclical nature into our in, in our customers' movements? Um, so the tea, room, tea, tea rooms and branch retail moving across to online, we've already captured it. We know, we know, what, that, we know what that journey is going to be, um, but, and, and we know what that message is going to be. We're going to move it into a gifting product range, and that's the message that's going to accompany our marketing uh, communications. But then moving it from online to tea room is actually a really tricky one because we know that uh, a lot of our a lot of people who are new to us and who are ordering online from us are from London or they're international um, and they, they can't get to us quite as easily. But we do believe that given the opportunity because we know how people come to us and the occasion and, and the thought and process that goes into a Betty's visit, we believe that they would do it in a gifting way. And so that's why we've kind of um, captured the message within this as experience. So. Um, we offer vouchers and, and, and the reason to drive that online um, process is you've, you've had a lovely gift sent to you or you have sent a gift, now come and experience it for yourself. You haven't done that and come along. Um, and so that's really how we intend to continually move forward within the next 100 years. And so that's it. Thank you. I don't know if I'm way ahead of time there, um, but please do pop by for a visit online or in branch, preferably online, but then come in branch as well. We'll tell you to do that. Um, yes, thank you. Any questions at all? Thank you, Samantha. Have we got any questions? No, we're all, we're all questions. Oh, sorry. <laughs> yes, Robin. <laughs> um, oh. <laughs> Um, with the food you're, you're doing, you don't really have peak season as in Christmas. You kind of have it all the way through the year. How do you kind of keep on top of that with the changes of your website and matching all those different occasions, both in store and on your site? Um, so we do. Ha so Christmas is a massive peak for us. We do about fifty-two percent of our business just in um, in the eight weeks of Christmas alone. Um, Easter then becomes big, but then you're right. All year round gifting is is also huge. Um, so it's we kind of um, so naturally with Christmas and Easter being um, very seasonal, we change our product for those uh, those times. But we also change all year round products as well. Um, but the the kind of um, approach we take. So we we have a big campaign for Christmas, a big campaign for Easter, and then we kind of just tactically use promotions throughout the rest of the year to push different uh, push at different times and try and sustain it in some way. <laughs> A lot of pre-planning, I bet. <laughs> Is there any other questions? No? Well, thank you very thank much, you. Samantha. Please, let's give her a final round of applause. Thank you.